Welcome to Custom Home Builder Solutions, also known as CHS, a job costing full accounting and profit management software designed specifically for the professional home builder. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Active Jobs Dashboard, which is a window that you will probably be using quite a lot because it's a window where you can select one job and then go to all kinds of things that you're doing for that one job. Um, we will open it in just a minute. Um, well, let me go ahead and just open it. And I want to talk about how it made a tab up here that's open so that no matter where else you go, like if I go back to the main menu, I can just jump back to the Jobs Dashboard. But first of all, I'd like to mention that the Jobs Dashboard, again, is for you to work on things for one job. So when you click something like um, Job Budgets, the first window that you're going to get is asking, do you just want to work on one job, basically, or do you want to use, in other words, do you want to use the Jobs Dashboard, and it will open the Jobs Dashboard. There are also usually other options, like if you do change orders, it might say, do you want to do change order menu, or do you want to do the jobs dashboard? Same with purchase orders. The reason you might go to, say, a change orders menu, or this all budgets and ACC list, let's do the change order one. The, one. the reason you might want to go there is because you're wanting to do some reports or some searching um, for all kinds of things for all kinds of jobs and get lists where several jobs are open, like maybe um, change orders that haven't been paid for and you want to see all the jobs, etc. So that's why you choose to go to the menu. But if you're really just wanting to work on change orders for one job because you're working on a job, you probably want to choose going to the dashboard. So let's talk about that dashboard. The very first thing I want you to notice is that it says it's active jobs dashboard. Select a job to show full menu for that job. So um, let's see if zero test gets us anywhere. So that is an active job. I mean, of course, all these are active jobs. Sorry. Um, let's say, let's go take a look. Right here, you have add edit jobs. And I want to find one that's not active just for a second. So you'll see all these yes, no's, yes, no's. There's a no on. K Mayo Alp. I'm not sure what, what that is for that builder. But if you go to the jobs dashboard, that K Mayo Alp will not be in it. So if you go back to the jobs list, which is still open, and for some reason you want it to be active now, you can just click on the no and it will change it to active. And so then if you go back to the jobs dashboard, K Mayo Alp will now be in there. I don't think there's much about it. So it's also, let me go ahead and mention this for a moment, it's also marked as a what if job and builders set up uh, jobs and they can mark them as what if if they're not actually going to use them to post any real job cost to, but they just want to do a budget worksheet to just do some uh, estimating or to make a budget worksheet that they're going to copy from for um, other jobs. Um, watch our videos about budget worksheets, etc. But it's just that's about all you're going to be doing about it is, is maybe it's a prospect and you're just sort of playing around with doing a budget but you don't want it to be in the drop down list when people are entering bills or doing various other things. So when I selected it, you see what if and yes and that you see you don't have nearly as many options. I'm going to go ahead and, and select one of our very active jobs, one that I'm always using in my demos just because I don't know why. Um, so I'm selecting that. And I'd like you to notice something. First of all, if I was logged on as George Brown, I'm, I'm logged on with top admin permissions, which means I will be able to click and open every single thing here. Um, if there's a different builder, I'm George Brown, and I've logged on, and it says uh, James Roberts over here as the builder project manager, and me as the construction manager and estimator, then George Brown being logged on is going to get a message after selecting the job that they are not um, one that has permissions to do stuff for the job. And you do that on the job setup window back on jobs list. Um, we'll look at that Smith job. Let me do S here. And we'll just open that job setup window for just a second. 
And right here, it's asking what the job manager name is, um, what the builder job manager is, is maybe like the construction supervisor, you know, in the company or something. The builder ID is probably the project manager, et cetera. And these are various users. See, there's a manager ID. These are users that you've set up to use CHS. And you give the job, you give them permissions to do stuff for the job, like issue POs, do budgets, do various things for the job by selecting people here. This is this means estimator ID and estimator name, which I also just put myself on because I didn't have any. But if I'm George Brown and I, on the jobs dashboard, select a job that I'm not marked as one of those and I have a low level of permission. A lower, I don't, by lower I just mean the permissions a project manager has, which means they don't have accounting, um, looking at revenues, that kind of thing. Um, you'll get a message about that as soon as you select the job if you don't really have permissions to a lot of stuff for that job. And if you are a project manager with permissions, it shouldn't be seeing job revenues or profit reports or something um, that's been marked like that. You may get messages on some of these links also. So I just wanted to point that out and how you can see who has basically permissions to this job. And the other people that will have permissions are people with real high level permissions like the controller permission and accounting permissions, etc. So basically all this is is a dashboard and across the top like I did you can go get a list of jobs. Um, we don't have schedule here. If you click on um, schedule somewhere in here, Gantt schedule question mark, you'll get a message that it must be open from the schedule menu, menu and click the job schedules link. That's because it really opens with a bunch of stuff about a lot of jobs to show you what things are so it doesn't open peculiar to a job. Um, and also the job stages and weekly status I just have here because it's a handy one for a project manager we've done in some earlier videos of other videos about saying what the latest stage certain jobs are in and it's a list of jobs so it's not peculiar to one job but it's a handy one to have available. And up here we have job summaries which has to do with um, several different jobs. These are, if you just have the permission level for a project manager, you won't be able to click these. They'll be dimmed out, but you can see the actual jobs and cost codes and get some averages between things. Uh, this window is also somewhat available when you're working on budgets so that you can look at history and average your costs and things like that. But I just wanted to point those things that are going on up here. Now, every one of these hyperlinks that you click will open some feature in CHS, whether it's the budget worksheet for this job, and it'll open it, and a lot of, sometimes it may be in a tab up here so it can stay open for you, and then you could jump back to the dashboard to do something else. But everything like this um, has something to do with the job. If I say I want to add a new change order, you'll notice that it already knows what job to fill in because I'm coming from the dashboard. If I want to add a new purchase order, it's going to know what job, you know, and then ask, be asking for vendor and other things about that. If you want to see all the actual job costs or approved posted unpaid costs, please watch videos about every one of these features that are throughout the program. Up here will be the help video that I'm doing right now, um, etc. So you can see help. And when you open the various windows that go with all of these, various things that you're doing, there will be a help option there. Um, let me see if there's anything else I wrote down that I wanted to say. I talked about the permissions. But basically, I think it's pretty straightforward. These are just, it's like a big menu of things you can do, uh, you can select for this job. A very important one is most all reports that are about one job can be found in one place by clicking this report central for the job and you'll get another menu that just has all kinds of reports. And this is just about reports. So purchase orders, you might want to do, you know, do something about lists. You might want to filter it down to some vendors or cost codes before you do it. But these are actually just lists of all kinds of reports that you can get about this job. Um, so that's, that's a really important window. And some accounting reports. And if, Again, if you're just the field manager, you won't be able to get to the financial reports, etc. in the accounting area, where those accountants just want you to stay out of their accounting. <laughs>
So that's about all I had to say about the jobs dashboard. I just wanted it to be in your general use tips because it is one that I expect you will be using um, a whole lot of the time. So thank you for watching.